How do I get better at drawing? As an art teacher, this is a question I get asked a lot. The simplest and least popular answer is practice, practice, practice. This usually turns students off as they are looking for something more immediate. If this applies to you, watch on. How to get better at drawing. Beginners often consider a successful drawing as one that looks realistic. A drawing that has correct proportions, good use of value, and shading, etc. But drawing can involve much more than that and involve different styles. My simplest advice is to keep a sketchbook and explore. Drawing should be fun and can involve things like doodling, patterns, cartooning, hand-drawn type, illustration, fine art, be abstract, use design, and many, many others. Your sketchbook and exploration of ideas doesn't necessarily have to be public. You can keep it to yourself if you are feeling reluctant. I do suggest sharing it with others though, as feedback is always useful. Try to do something every day if you can, even if it's only for 15 minutes. If this is difficult, dedicate or schedule a one or two hour session once a week for yourself. Write it in your calendar. Be disciplined about it. Don't get discouraged. We are often our own harshest critics. Start off small and work your way up. This daily practice is useful as it will show progress over time, but it will also develop your observational skills and start to build internal visual references in your head that will later start to be incorporated into your own work, leading to your own personal style. It's so important for me to stress exploration. Not only does this apply to your sketchbook, but also to looking at other art examples, either online, via books, or at galleries. Analyze these artworks you like. What do they do or have that you like or dislike? Mimic these parts that you like. Apply them to your own ideas. When starting out, it's totally okay to copy what else is out there. This is how we learn. All artists do it or did it. Usually the biggest hurdles all artists face is fear. This means we think our work is not good enough, our skills are not good enough, our ideas are not good enough. We become afraid of rejection, embarrassment, and have self-doubt. If you were to try a sport or begin playing a musical instrument, we usually don't attack or sabotage ourselves like this. We know we have to do the drills and practice to get better. I'm not sure why we don't apply this though when it comes to creating art. Like everything else, it is work. The best place to do this work is in a sketchbook. So that blank page in a sketchbook can also be intimidating, right? It's important to just do. Don't overthink everything. There are several sketchbook prompt ideas online for you to investigate. Here are some of my personal ideas to help you start drawing and progress. Doodling is one of my favorites, and these can also range from the simple to the fine art. Zentangles or mandalas are a great way to start. Even if you are not into this, it helps you to explore space, decorative techniques, and different types of lines. It also helps develop pattern skills and repetition. Mike Perry, John Bergerman, Joanna Basford, and Kirby Rosanas were all helpful for me when I started taking it more seriously. Patterning can be another useful technique in your visual repertoire. These can involve line techniques or actual objects for pattern making. As a prompt variation, give yourself an audience or client to cater to. What could a pattern look like for a laptop case, a woman's dress, kids wallpaper, etc. These are all great tactics or strategies to start filling pages in your sketchbook. The work of Lisa Congdon was inspirational to me for this. Paulina Oshu's floral patterns might also interest you. Explore cartooning or illustration. Copy characters you like at first and then start stretching and developing your own. What would the character look like with a bigger head, a shorter body? What would happen if you combined or substituted parts from different characters? Kawaii illustration is also good as they are cuter, simpler, and can also be combined into doodling. There are several successful fine artists that have incorporated cartooning into their own art. Some of my favorites are Kaz, Yoshitomo Nara, James Jean, Takashi Murakami, George Morton Clark, Gary Baseman, Gary Taxali, Tim Biscop, and several, several others. Folk art could be another good place to start. Folk art is traditional arts from different cultures that often convey a cultural identity. This could include patterns and representations from Earth. 
for me, Haida designs played a big role while us growing up. Look into the work of Dinara Mertalopova if interested. Hand-drawn type or lettering can also be fun to explore. Look into different typefaces and illustrate phrases, movie quotes, or song lyrics. As you practice more, your arrangements will become more and more advanced. Look into the work of Chris Piaskic and Eric Marinovich. Some good warm-up activities can also help. Try out continuous line drawings. This is where you draw something from observation without lifting your pencil off the paper. Basically, one continuous line. Don't worry about accuracy at this stage. Force yourself to slow down and carefully observe inch by inch of what it is you are drawing by focusing on the contours and details. If there is a drawing result you do not like, overlap it with another drawing with different colors. Drawing with your non-dominant hand can also be fun. Your line work will be more shaky and expressive. Don't view it as a final drawing result, but as an exercise to train yourself in observation and hand-eye coordination. Line contour line drawing is similar to the continuous line drawing activity. The catch is you do not look down at your paper while it's drawing. Go slow. It forces you to critically observe what you are drawing. You will find these drawings look more expressive and abstract. Once you start to get more confident with line work, move on to more sustained observational drawing. Start off with natural objects. Draw things like leaves and flowers. This is a good choice as these objects are often irregular and if you make a mistake with proportions or line, most people likely will not notice. Try drawing an object in 10 minutes. Then draw it again in 5, then 3, then 1, then even 10 seconds. Then go back and draw it slowly for 30 minutes. You will notice differences with your observational skills and line quality. Try drawing the same thing but experimenting with different line weights or thicknesses, different types of pens or different mark making techniques. Once more confident, move on to pencil shading. Try to draw these natural objects with detail. Then move on to geometric forms and basic shapes. With this, perspective will become more important and will require more accuracy on your part, which will require more observation. When drawing, hold your pencil correctly. Draw with your arm, not your wrist. Try to avoid small hair-like lines when starting out. Everyone does it, but try to be more confident. This takes time to get used to, so don't be too hard on yourself. As you improve, your rendering skills will become faster. As you draft out basic compositions, these lines should be light and loose. When you start moving on to more complicated things, draw the largest objects first. Starting here helps break the sections of what you're drawing to be more accurate. Look for basic shapes. Simplify the parts you are drawing. You can also start off drawing what's in the background and then move forward. For landscapes, this includes the horizon line. Look at the line drawings of Vincent van Gogh and Albert Dürer. Note how they use line techniques to capture form and texture. Then try out applying these skills to your own urban sketches. Speaking of which, look into an urban sketchers group in your area. Veronica Lalor could also be an interesting artist for those of you who wish to be more loose and expressive. To improve with traditional or formal drawing skills, it usually always comes down to observation. Observation is about 50% of the work. Artists' eyes are constantly darting down to their paper and darting up to what they are drawing. They don't look once or twice and then draw for 30 minutes. They are constantly checking and rechecking and observing. For more complicated drawings, break sections down looking for the basic shapes and the different parts. As you do this, you will then start comparing the different sections with each other and the different relationships each one has to the other. Pay attention to the line angles and directions. Remember again, don't start off heavy with your pencil. We keep it light until it is right. To improve your shading skills, it all comes down to contrast between your tones. There will always be a highlight, a white reflective area. There will always be black sections, your darkest tones. Students are often reluctant to really darken these areas, but once you do it, it makes your middle tones and highlight stand out more. There are also the middle tones to consider. How you apply these and blend them with smooth gradation 
will also increase the realism of your work. Learning about perspective is also useful both in still life drawing and landscape drawings. Carefully notice the angles and directions of the lines. Look into one point and two point perspective to hone your skills. If this is your type of thing, you may also prefer technical drawings. Isometric drawings can also be fun. This is a form of 3D drawing done using 30 degree angles. You can do a Google search for isometric graph paper to start off with. It is also available on the Procreate app if you have an iPad. Some artists, like Matthias Adolfsson, also uses this technique in his cartoon-like drawings and illustrations. Look at the sketchbooks of other artists. There are several sketchbook flip-through videos on YouTube. Check out the work of Tommy Kane. He has a lot of variety in his work with techniques that could also inspire you. So all that was quite a bit. Let's do a quick recap. Basically, explore and try new things. You might be a great surface pattern designer and not even know it yet. Don't get overcome by fear. Just do. Make it a daily practice if you can. We also talked about exploring doodling, creating patterns, doing cartooning or illustration, full cart, hand-drawn type or lettering, some warm-up activities such as continuous line drawing, non-dominant hand drawing, blind contour drawing, and drawing by actually slowing down are all great practice exercises. Then move on to observational drawing of natural objects such as leaves and plants. Explore line techniques like stippling and hatching, and then to shading with gradation. Once more confident, explore drawing basic shapes and geometric forms. This can then stretch out into urban sketching. Connected to this is also the use of perspective. Try out other landscapes too. Basically observe, observe, observe what you are drawing. One area that some may find harder than others is abstract drawing or non-representational art. But for some, this may come naturally after exploring something like zentangles. This could be simple drawings using line, patterns or shapes, or lean more towards design. Try bridging one of the other tactics listed into the abstract realm. You can also begin to explore mixed media or incorporating layers into your work. Look into appropriating or remixing existing work as well. And if you simply like just documenting things, start visual journaling. Some work, books, and videos by Danny Gregory will help you out with this. Give yourself permission to fail. You will still learn a lot. When I was starting out, I was concerned more with quantity over quality. I just wanted to make sure I was doing something every day if I could. After some time, it was something I looked forward to in my day. It became meditative and helped increase my personal well-being and helped me to relax after a hard day. One thing we haven't really talked about is tools. To be honest, they don't really matter yet at this stage. A normal HP pencil is fine or even a ballpoint pen. But some things I also like to use are fine line markers and Posca paint pens or markers. If you must, a 2B and 6B pencil might also be useful if you prefer to focus on shading. It's good to explore, but don't break the bank feeling like you have to buy everything. I focus mostly on dry media like pencils and pens, but a lot of this can also be done digitally, which can also be more forgiving if errors are made. Students sometimes think that the drawing app makes you a better artist. Usually this is not the case. Most professionals will draw it out first in pencil on paper and then scan or photograph the work into the app to digitally draw over. I like drawing digitally, but this also has its own hurdles at times. There is also something pleasing for me about being tactile in a sketchbook or notebook. Experimenting with the types of paper could also lead to interesting results. Drawing on black paper or recycled papers can also produce pleasing artwork. We are also only focusing on drawing here, but there are other possible avenues to explore too, such as collage, paper craft, printmaking, painting, and more. So here we are again. How do I get better at drawing? It's practice, but also experimenting and trying new things and growing as a person to find something you like. It's trying to be consistent and make it a daily habit. Being able to draw realistically doesn't necessarily make you a better artist. The successful work of David Shrigley illustrates this point. Broaden and expand your possibilities. 
Your weirdness is probably what will make you unique. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope you found it helpful and gave you some insights. Feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, or leave a comment or suggestion below. Or simply stop the video, go pick up a pencil, and start drawing. This has been a Foo Video Production.